When you're covering events, often the story is in getting that hard to get photo or video. Well, journalists have a new tool to help them do it. It's called a drone. And their use in journalism is being pioneered by none other than Tim Pool. If you followed Occupy Wall Street, you already know Tim Pool. He was the guy on the ground who live streamed chunks of it straight from his cell phone. His coverage was featured on NBC, Reuters, and Al Jazeera, capturing footage that even the networks with their helicopters could not. Pool's been using drones to cover events, but how useful are they and what are their limits? Are they truly the newest vehicles in journalism? We're about to find out. Please join me in welcoming Tim Pool. So Tim, drones, yes. journalism, how did this start? <laughs> it, it actually started a while ago as, a, as an idea for a business venture. My friend Jeff wanted to use blimps with live, with live feeds and, and film uh, concerts, big events, so that people can see themselves and wave. Are you talking about big blimps in the sky, or are we talking? Little ones, uh, similar to drones, but they can fly up much longer if they've got you know, helium lift. So that, that idea sort of fizzled out when we moved towards the software realm of, of development and then uh, fell apart. But towards the end of the year, the big protest movement started. So, I mean, everyone here is probably familiar with Occupy Wall Street. And I was, I was looking for solutions for individuals to produce uh, the next level of media, you know, the next... So, you know, seeing live streaming, you, you have the potential... Uh, an individual has the ability to broadcast to the world just with a, with a cell phone. And uh, after the, the big events, actually, just about one year ago today, my, my friend hit me up again, and he was at, he's like, you, you think what I'm thinking? And I was like, I'm looking at drones again. And uh, we saw a video from Poland called Robocopter where they mounted a DSLR to a drone, flew it over this huge protest, and we thought, this is, this is how we're going to get the, the next, you know, the, the next... Vers to expand the versatility of, uh, of vantage points to, I mean, the, the, it's, it's really new territory. We saw potential and, and we went with it. And so we started with uh, a cheap model to see how we could, you know, where we could take it. Absolutely. Um, I think you got it over there. Now that's the Parrot AR yeah. drone, right? That's, that's something you just buy in a store. Yeah, yeah. You, you, this thing we've got is the, uh, the Parrot AR drone 2.0. Shoots high definition video with a wide angle lens. And you can just pick it up at Brookstone or order online at Amazon for a couple hundred bucks. Now, how long have you been using this? Uh, a year. Okay. We've had a, I've gone through four. Uh, <laughs> experimenting with things results in the demise of some of them. Yeah, I read, we, one of them like, ended up in a tree or something like that? Yeah, yeah. One of the cool things we did was, uh, we're, so the range is, is limited for the, you know, the, the consumer. You get about 150 feet. And I attached a broadcast antenna to my computer with a one mile range and was in a very large park in Albany, and it went too far, and I lost sight of it, and then it ended up in a tree, and it was it probably still there. I can't get it down. <laughs> All right, so I, um, we don't want to keep everyone in suspense too long. Why don't we <laughs> see this thing in action? All right, I'll try and be as fast as possible. All right, so let me explain to you guys what I'm doing as I'm doing it, because it gets a bit complicated when... Oh, the first row, you guys signed all your waivers, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm using, I'm using a computer to control this, and I'm going to be using a, if you guys in the, uh, could, there we go. So hopefully the battery's running, but I'm using a PS3 controller to fly this, and I'm using my computer to control it. So this is something that most people aren't going to be able to do. So let's just fly it. You can watch up there. You can wave, it's okay. <laughs> Sweet. So pretty stable when you're, when you're indoors. So it's pretty low res up here, obviously, because it's a big screen. Um, but what is, what is the resolution you get? Well, well how, how about that? Everybody, there it is. So what, what is the resolution you can get in a live stream? So if, you're, if, if we're broadcasting live right now, it's going to be about 360p, so it's... It's not too good. If you're looking at it on a computer, you know, I, I think you can arguably say you could recognize someone's face. Obviously, it looks pretty bad up there, but it's huge, so you know, that has an effect on the resolution. But there are open source alternatives for uh, the AR Drone 1.0, which shoots 328p, so it is even worse than the, the current one. But they've got 
uh, there's open source cross-platform alternatives for controlling the drone. And uh, once those become available for the 2.0, it's 720p high def with a wide angle lens. And you can, you can get that quality if you're recording with your iPhone or straight to USB. It actually has a USB port inside. You can plug in a, a flash stick and uh, it captures everything. There's no audio, but. So you're basically talking about like the hacker community at large, not is there like some service that's gonna make yeah. this ability possible. But I mean, it soon we'll have higher resolutions, you'll be able to live stream. But if you're not live streaming, um, you can do the full 720p. Yeah, yeah, there, and there's really amazing developments coming from the, uh, from the drone journalism and the, and the drone just open source community, as well as, unfortunately, but obviously military uses. Right. Uh, they're putting a lot of money into this stuff. Well, let's get into some of that. Like, I mean, more that, what are the situations in which this is most useful? And I'm sure you're thinking of some, probably what, what sparked your thoughts at Occupy Wall Street for some very specific situations on where a drone could get what you couldn't get. What were those? The, the first idea was, I mean, let's just say the, the press index, you know, the rankings of press freedom around the world. The, the U.S.'s ranking has dropped, I, I, I can't remember exactly how many points, but a lot, because of, specifically because of the NYPD's action against press during Occupy Wall Street. A specific incident in New York, which I was a witness to, was a, a Reuters journalist having his, cam his lens grabbed by an NYPD officer and having the lens broken off. I saw in Boston, uh, actually everyone saw this if you're watching, the police actually lined up to block journalists from filming the arrests that, that were happening. So the first thing we thought was, the, the, the legality of this is a bit ambiguous, but it is, it is legal. You're talking about the drone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, safety and liability are the biggest concerns for sure, but we can just launch a drone 15, 20 feet in the air and no individual is going to stand in front of that camera. So we have access to a new, a new range of, of vantage points. Like helicopters are going to be, at, they're, they're never gonna be close to 400 feet. They're gonna be way, way above that. And w in which case they have to zoom in to get, that, to get uh, a shot. And then an individual, unless you're in a building or you're, you've got a, some other flying device, you, you pretty much need some kind of stable flying balloon maybe, but a drone solves that uh, mid-tier, you know, for filming. So those are the advantages. What are, what are the limitations of this technology right now, aside from the resolution that we've seen? So specifically to the AR drone, it's, it's got artificial intelligence, but it's, no offense, Parrot, it's dumb. It, uh, <laughs> when it gets hit by wind, it tries to uh, balance against it. So it will push against the wind, and then if the wind lets up, it'll shoot to the other side. So this... And then another problem I've come across is when, when it's functioning, when, it, when it's running the AI, you can't give it commands. So funny story. I tried to, me and my friend Jeff thought maybe we can pick up an espresso with a drone. Let's, <laughs> let's see what we can do with this. And we launched the drone from our second story window at our apartment, brought it down you know, to, to about 15 feet. We, we were all set up with the coffee shop. They were, they were totally keen on it. We were gonna film it. And then when, when the wind hit it, I, I was freaking out because I'm like, if this thing goes into the street and if there's a little old lady, like that would destroy my her like, and it would kill me on the inside for, for hurting someone. But <laughs> So I just tried doing everything I could to get it to land and it wouldn't listen because it was auto-correcting. So I hit the emergency button, which kills it instantly, hits the ground and shatters. And uh, that, that's the one that shattered. We had it repaired. So how did you get your espresso? I had to walk down and get a cold, <laughs> cold espresso because... It took so long. I hope you had some money in the drone. Yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, $4 folded up in, in a cup holder mounted to the top. So it, it can work. So um, how, I mean, maybe you're not the guy to ask for this, but I mean, what, when, once we get to that level of autonomy um, where the drone can kind of make decisions on its own, um, what does that bode for like how these things will both be used and potentially regulated, do you think? Yeah, man, that's a... It's, we're, we're looking at a new playing field, essentially, with the this, this, this stuff that I've you know, been looking at for drones. Regulation's obvious. We've got the FAA trying to figure out how to make this illegal because it's happening. Their biggest concern right now, they've, they were supposed to set up some test sites for, for companies, and, uh, and I'm assuming government, but they've postponed it because they have to investigate the privacy issue in, you know, in drones. When it comes to autonomy, this becomes particularly you know, it becomes both exciting and dangerous at the same time. Like, uh, there's a documentary put out by Vice 
And one of the, the, the gentlemen who filmed it had a really good quote. He said, you can buy a pair of scissors and do something bad with it. So the drone itself, however, right now when we have a drone, you can, one of the, one of the easiest things is obviously filming. So if you want to film real estate, uh, if you're a journalist, and you want to get an aerial shot of a crowd, you know, any event, uh, a waterfall, who knows, wh whatever you want to film, you have, the, you have the access to that now. With autonomy, it's particularly awesome because one of the biggest problems is human error. You, you have to learn how to fly the thing. If you could pre-program coordinates, altitude, tilt angle, all of those, uh, you know, everything into there, you can just let it do its thing. It can fly up. You can put a, a GPS in it. It can have cellular connections, 3G, 4G. And you could essentially have a drone flying around for 15 minutes, shooting photos at various angles, and then tweeting them out and posting them to Facebook just by, on its own. The, the, the scary thing is when you don't know who's flying it when someone is flying it, but it can be hacked and controlled. One of the ways to stop a, one of these RC uh, vehicles when, it's, uh, when someone's piloting it is to, you know, theoretically, you could, you know, fire some microwaves at it or, you know, use some kind of jamming to disrupt its signal, which will cause it to probably just start going up until it can't anymore because the things, this one particularly, but the, the scary thing is when these things are fully autonomous, we might see the, the dangers in uh, nefarious use. It's really hard to figure out how to stop it without hurting bystanders, what it's doing and why it's doing it. It could have encryption that you can't, you can't break, so... So okay, we're, to look at, we're talking about misuse here, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about sort of getting ahead of that and you know figuring out ways it can be used as a tool? I mean, identification sounds like it would be a clear one. Like you see a drone, like well, who's <coughs> is it? Who's doing that? I mean, obviously you could put CBS on the side or whatever. Yeah. But um, apart from that, I mean, you, you mean like what? What can we use this? Like, what are the potential? Well, it'd be like, like if, if you're someone who is being filmed and you decide, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be filmed. Um, like, I mean, the, the legality aside, I mean, is there a recourse and what should it be? Unless you know what, what you know, the filming, who's filming and why, it's, it's going to fall into the argument that if you're in a public place, you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy unless you're wearing a baseball cap with your hood up. So... You know, again, it's, it's new territory, and uh, I, I'm all for the protection of privacy, and uh, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm talking about newsworthy things. I'm not going to fly this near people's homes or near their windows, but... But the paparazzi might. Is, yeah, absolutely, and they're going to... they're going to paparazzi here? <laughs> well, the rumor going around right now is that TMZ is trying to buy one, but they've denied it, so I really doubt TMZ is going to... But... Um, what would your dream drone be? Oh, this is where it gets awesome. <laughs> so... We, okay, first I'll start with the really idealistic. We bought an EEG, uh, for those that aren't familiar, I believe it's an electroencephalogram, and it reads your brainwaves, and they have this game called a Mindflex, and it's for, they sell it to kids. You've essentially got a headband, and if you concentrate hard enough, a fan will blow a ping pong ball higher and lower, and then it moves through an obstacle course. So using that concept, I said, let's use the same idea, if we can get at least two commands from the EEG, we can do uh, ascend, and then we can do clockwise rotation, which would mean that we can fly the thing with our brains, like telekinesis. Uh, this is entirely possible, but it is also idealistic because the, the I mean, what are you going to do with that? You know, show <laughs> off. But uh, the, the the dream, the the real practical dream drone, uh, drone for me would be uh, GPS. 3G, 4G modules, so it's got cellular connections. It can use the 4G for broadcasting, uh, high-definition video and, and audio. This thing doesn't have audio. That's what it need, uh, one thing that they need. And uh, 3G to communicate with uh, what my team has worked out, and I'm not as big in, the, you know, in this field, but essentially dialing into a chat server, an IRC server, so that it receives its commands through text. We meet halfway by dialing in as well. And then you can control the thing as long as it's with, within a range of a cell tower. There's obviously going to be latency issues. So we hope to have, have it be a hybrid Zeppelin drone, uh, quadcopter. But I guess to, here, you know, let, let's get a bit more interesting. This thing is, in my opinion, almost obsolete when it comes to drones. And it's funny because a lot of you are probably seeing this for the first time 
or I've only heard of it in the past year, but there's a, there's a, a group out of Georgia Tech right now, and they've got something called the Dragonfly. It weighs only a few ounces. It fits in the palm of your hand. It has insect wings. It's got GPS. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got cellular uh, antennas. It's got a high-definition uh, high camera. not sure if I said that. And it can fly for between 10 and 30 minutes, and it's $100. Though it's right now, I believe, that, that project's like a, a, is it an Indiegogo, Indiegogo. project? Oh, that's not Kickstarter. That's the, uh, it's, Kickstarter yeah, so flow. Indiegogo, yeah. They, they're raising money to, to mass produce it. And I guess if, you know, by next June, they'll be, they'll be sent out. I'm not entirely sure. I, I tried, I emailed them hoping that they could, uh, you know, come down and, and show one off, but I unfortunately wasn't able to. So then that one's much smaller, right? It's yeah, it's the size of a, a candy bar. It's, I mean, the wind is going to take that thing, you know. So what does it mean when everyone has one of these things, not even just journalists, but like everyone can spend $100, get a drone, put a camera on it, kind of be a citizen journalist, I guess, or something. I mean, does it become the surveillance state? I mean, are, we, are, are people going to do that? Is this going to be the next camera phone? Um, I don't know if people, I mean, maybe our phones will eventually just have the ability to fly for some reason. <laughs> but hey, they can do everything else. So it's hard to see why the average person would buy one, but then again, we are, you know, it's, it's hard to spot the trends. Mm -hmm. Some people have said that drones are the technology looking for the problem to solve, and there's an obvious uh, potential in having them. The, my view is we can't really know. I'm sure a lot of people have really good ideas about, you know, what they want to do with it. I, I think one of the obvious things that these can, would be great for if it's got a flight time close to a half an hour is short range uh, package delivery. Th you know, some of these drones that cost closer to $10,000 can carry four pounds. Some can carry more. There's octocopters, there's, uh, there's even planes. So you could theoretically launch a drone from your, your, you know, your drone port on the roof of your you know, office building to, tr to, to send legal paperwork to three blocks over as opposed to hiring a courier, you know, things like that. I don't know what the individual can find use with, but uh, I mean, imagine if instead of having a, a, a Nokia like, or a Coolpix camera to shoot your, your family, you pull out a little dragonfly and you just toss it in the air and you wave to it and you get this really great aerial shot of your family. And I mean, we can make stuff up, what we can do with it really. It's this open field. Well, what about journalists specifically? Like how do you think, or well first, why haven't more people jumped onto this and how, how do you think um, it could be used? I mean, could we one day potentially see a major news organization send drones to, say, war zones in the same way the military does. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've actually been in contact with many news organizations who are like, show us the way. Unfortunately, it's commercial, commercially, it's, it's illegal. There's a, there's, a, there's a ban on it. Because, yeah, I mean, if right now they open up the skies, you, you, drones would be everywhere. Times Square would have like 50 of them at once. And then, uh, you know. It'd be noisy. It, it's <laughs> noisy, yep. And then there's... Uh, at least for the quad, the quadcopters and the and the the airplane model ones, you've got an issue of uh, the the dangers of unreliability and falling on someone. The dragonflies are brilliant because those things they fall on your head and you say, "What was that?" But uh, well, we got a little bit of time left. One thing I wanted to point out is when when you say drone, people the first thing they think of is a predator drone or a reaper drone and horrible horrible things. But this is technology that can be used for whatever your imagination can 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 think of, and it doesn't have to be nefarious or, or wrong, evil. But let's not, you know, let's, it, it's also important to know, know that everyone assumes that they're aerial drones. So there are underwater, uh, there's unmanned underwater vehicles, UUVs, like the tuna drone, which is being used by Homeland Security. This is, you know, just there's stories coming out about it now. And they, are, they look like yellow fish, and they're modeled after fish, and they go underwater, and they can scan the bottoms of boats for, you know, what needs repairs, what needs cleaning. They're, for a, for a long time now, we've had uh, unmanned ground vehicles. We've used that for defusing bombs. And there's the, something you guys can all pick up is the Rover 2.0, again, at Brookstone, which is a little, little rover, and it's got uh, a high-definition camera that can swivel up and down. You can drive it around and film and do sassy things with your friends if you'd like, but. <laughs> cool. Well, Tim, I see our time is rapidly running out. Um, I want to thank you for coming here today. And giving us some insight and a really cool demo with uh, the AR drone. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate thanks for, thanks for having me. I want to...